All right, guys, who's ready to talk about accounting? Even before my deep dive, I've had a lot of requests from people asking if I could go over the basics of accounting as it relates to do. One of the hard things for me with this is I've been around accounting for a long, long time. Both of my parents have degrees in accounting. I took accounting in high school, and then my degree is actually in accounting. And no, I'm not a CPA. I don't really have an interest in that, and I won't necessarily advise you in tax accounting unless it's with some general stuff. But when it comes to accounting inside of Odoo, I think there are a few people that could advise you better. So, in the interest of getting you to where you're self-sufficient and can understand accounting inside of Odoo, let's talk about some accounting basics, the very first steps to using accounting properly. So today we're going to talk about journal entries, journal items, accounts and account types and what their resting balances inside of Odoo, and credits and debits. So first, let's talk about journal entries. And you can't really talk about journal entries without talking about journal items and debits and credits. Basically, Everything that happens inside of our company that has a financial impact should be represented by a transaction that's called a journal entry. Now these transactions or journal entries can take many different forms. In Odoo, we can have journal entries, which basically take care of miscellaneous transactions that don't fall under these other groups. We can have customer invoices, customer credit notes, vendor bills, vendor credit notes, and beyond that, and certainly to a lesser extent, we have sales receipts and purchase receipts. Each of these journal entries is always going to have at least two things be true. They're going to have at least two journal items, and the sum of the debits and the credits from those journal items is always going to be equal. This serves an important purpose because it keeps our books balanced. Now you may not fully understand what that means, but it makes sure that everything's accounted for and that if something does go wrong, it's easy to follow a trail back through. And yes, that does mean if we took every single debit in the system and every single credit in the system and added them up, they would be equal. If they aren't, we've got big problems. Thankfully, in most accounting systems, you can't get away with this, and Odoo is included in that. So let's go ahead and look at an example of this in Odoo. So our type of journal entry here is a customer invoice, and if we click on journal items, which is a very helpful little tab, we can see that we have these journal items. Each of these lines here is a journal item, okay? And we can see that the debits right here equal the sum of the credits. That is always going to be true. And if it's not true, you've got an issue in your system. So let's break this down real quick. So a journal item is going to have definitely an account, and it's going to have a debit or a credit here. Now where I see a lot of people get screwed up is understanding the difference between a debit and a credit. But really when it comes down to it, the big difference is what type of account you're actually posting that journal item to. The type of account determines your resting balance. Now what I mean by resting balance is this. Some accounts are positive when they're debits, and some accounts are positive when they're credits, which can be a bit confusing. But if you understand this, most of the time you can break down what's going on inside of your accounting and make sure that things are working properly. So pay attention to this part. So inside of most accounting systems, you have assets, liabilities, equity, and sales and expenses. Inside of Odoo, these are broken down even deeper, but they all fall into these five main groups. So you can rely on this. So let's make sure you understand each of these account types. Assets bring value to the company. They're something that has value. So essentially, this is accounts receivable, so money we're expecting to come in from our customers. Uh, it could be a building. It could be intellectual property. It's anything that adds value to the company. And these have a debit balance inside of Odoo. Again, to make sure we're on the same page, debit for the resting balance means that a debit will increase an asset inside of Odoo. Liabilities are kind of the opposite of assets. They're something that actually decreases the value of our company. So we could look at it and say, okay, this is accounts payable. So it's what we owe to our vendors, or it's a loan, or perhaps a credit note. Something like that would definitely be a liability, and a credit is always going to increase our liabilities. Last, we have equity, which is basically the difference between our assets and our liabilities. So if you think about it, when it comes to your house, the difference between the market value of your house and your outstanding loan amount is the equity you have in your house. So that translates here really well. All three of these accounts are represented on the balance sheet. And so we get the formula that's assets, 
equals liabilities plus owner's equity, which I'm going to show you on the balance sheet holds true in Odoo as well. Just to round this out, looking at a balance sheet inside of Odoo, we can see that the total assets are 4,874.27, and the sum of liabilities and equity, which is liabilities plus equity down here, is 4,874.27. So again, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Next, we have our profit and loss or income statement accounts, our sales and expenses. So for sales, they're increased by a credit and expenses are increased by a debit. Now this may not inherently make sense for a lot of people, but as we go through some examples, this will make a lot more sense. So go ahead and hold on if you're a bit worried about this. So for our first real world example, let's talk about invoices and we'll use Odoo to illustrate this. So looking at an invoice, we have two main things going on here. First, we're selling the customer these products right here. So we've got this product and this product, which are both going to product sales, which are income or revenue accounts. So we know that to increase this, we have to have a credit here. And on the other side, we have our accounts receivable, which is an asset increasing as well. So the obligation the customer has to pay us is increasing. So that asset we have is increasing and our sales are increasing here too. So we look at this and we realize, okay, this is why revenue or sales accounts need to be a credit balance because they generally increase an asset at the same time. Again, our debits are going to equal our credits. We have this final piece, which is a liability that's increased, where we need to pay the government these taxes that we've received on their behalf down the road. All this grouped together then gives us our balance that our accounts receivable increases by, which is the amount that the customer needs to pay us. All this keeps our debits and credits equal. Now, if we were using automated inventory accounting, there would be an additional piece to this transaction, which would reduce our inventory, so it would credit our asset inventory, and it would debit our cost of goods sold to show the expense of the item that we sold on our profit and loss. We're gonna do another example, but I'm not gonna do a lot more than that, but what I am going to encourage you to do is this. Whenever you have a journal entry or transaction inside of Odoo, Look at the journal items and break down for yourself why it does or doesn't make sense. The more you do this, the more your understanding of accounting is going to improve. And if you ever have one that doesn't seem to make sense to you, go ahead and drop it in the comments below this video and I'll try and help you make sense of it. Or perhaps we'll need to fix something. Anyway, for our next example, let's go ahead and do a vendor bill here. So going into this vendor bill, we can look at our journal items again. And let's go ahead and break down what's going on here. So looking at this, we bought a dark blue stool. We're pushing that directly to expenses on our profit and loss. We've got a bit of tax that we ended up paying, which is also an expense here. And this increases our obligation to pay our vendor Azure Interior by 575. So we have a credit that's increasing our liability. And again, as always, our debits equal our credits right here. It's always going to be the case. Okay, hopefully your head's not swimming too much. Hopefully this is starting to clarify things for you. We're going to do one more example. So let's go ahead and do a payment. What we would expect to happen is we're going to reduce our account payable and it's on a credit balance side. So that's going to debit our accounts payable or our obligation to Azure Interior. And then it's going to credit our bank account, which is an asset. So that reduces that as well. And sadly, default Odoo is not going to do this normally speaking. So if you're wanting it to work this way, which I would encourage you to do, go ahead and check out my other video here. So let's go ahead and pay this bill. So we're gonna pay the full amount here, okay? And it's gonna be a manual payment. It's gonna be on this payment date. All that stuff, not terribly important for us right now. But if we look at the payment and then go to the journal entry, we'll see that a piece of this goes to outstanding payments because again, this is an Odoo, so we'll need to match up the rest of this. And the accounts payable is reduced with a debit of 622.27. The reason this goes to outstanding payments is because we need to match this up to the bank on the other side. So what happens at the bank account is we have a credit on the bank account and a debit to outstanding payments. So then that credit and debit cancels out, but don't necessarily need to think about that too much right now. So why is this important? I mean, why do we spend all this time doing all these little transactions? 
I mean, what value does it really give us if we have cash in the bank? Isn't that enough? There's really two main reasons that we do accounting and why it's important to understand this kind of stuff. The first is to make sure that what we're reporting to the government that we're under is accurate, and that is not a small thing. But the second reason is so that we can make good business decisions. The profit and loss and the balance sheet all depend on these transactions that we've set up. Nothing happens with these unless we have journal entries going in. And if those aren't going in properly, then it's going to give us bad information. And usually bad information leads to bad decisions. So hopefully this has helped you understand accounting a little bit more. If it didn't make sense the first time, maybe watch it again or drop it in the comments below and let me know what didn't make sense. And I'll try and cover it in future videos. Also, this is probably a good time to mention the courses that I'm going to start offering. I'm going to start doing month long group classes on bookkeeping and potentially as well on managerial accounting for CFOs or controllers or CEOs, people that want to look at this at a higher level. If you'd be interested in something like that, please also drop that in the comments below. And as always, if you have any further questions, please drop those in the comments below as well, or grab some time with me on my Calendly. Either way, thanks again for stopping by, guys. I really appreciate it, and I hope this was helpful to you.